Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin Lost Years, issue number one from IDW. So yeah, I thought I was done with The Last Ronin, but apparently there's a brand new series set in the same universe. This one is actually a prequel to The uh, Last Ronin. Well, actually, it's both a prequel and a sequel because we get two different timelines. We get one timeline where we see the aftermath of what happened when Michelangelo killed Oroku and the fallout from all that. And then we see a flashback where we get to see what Michelangelo was doing after his family was murdered, but before he came back to the city. And uh, yeah, I was super excited for that because I freaking, I love The Last Ronin. The Last Ronin is it's one of those where it's just so fantastically written, drawn, just the stories that's told but it's also just really sad <laughs> because everybody dies everyone except for april like april is the only last surviving member from the original group that's still all around so it was kind of hard to see all that yeah uh we get to see michelangelo again so this is written by kevin eastman and tom waltz so the same people that did the last ronin which i was very happy for because one thing i hate is when Someone does something unique, like they'd share this unique take or this unique universe or whatever, and it gets really like, like people love it, it gets critically acclaimed, and then they decide to do like a follow up, but by a completely different team. And it's like, uh, I feel like that new team, like as hard as they try, they just can't really capture the magic that the original did. So I'm glad that the uh, the writing team is the same. So as I said before, we uh, we get two different things. So we get Michelangelo being attacked in the past by a group of ruffians we cut to the future the, the the now the present which is the fallout of michelangelo killing oroku and we have the new batch of turtles so anyone who uh, who's not familiar with the last ronin i did a review for every single issue and i go through all the story and stuff like that as well as I have a video that goes through all the character deaths, like everyone that died in that series, how they died and stuff like that. But basically, I guess just a really super quick recap. There's a fallout between the Foot Clan and the Ninja Turtles. Everybody ends up getting killed except for Michelangelo and April. And Karai's son ends up taking control, not just of the Ninja Clan, but also the entire city. He uh, goes and he kills off all the mutants around. Eventually... The last Ronin, Michelangelo, arrives back at the city. He meets with April and Casey Jones and April's daughter, uh, whose name is also Casey, Casey Marie Jones. And the two of them basically create like a freedom fighting force that take out Oroku. And in the end, Michelangelo ends up killing Oroku, but he dies in the process. With him dead, there's like no turtles left, except in the end, it's discovered that there's actually four turtles that have the mutagen and michelangelo has left splinter's book like the book of like ninja, uh, ninjutsu and just the training and all that to become ninjas and it's up to casey to train the next generation of ninja turtles and so we have them but they're all babies at this point in time so we have odin uno moha and yi odin and moha are male uno and yi are female and this is what I'm considering the first time we've had a female turtle that's canon. And I know people might be saying, oh, there's uh, Jenica, there's Venus. I don't consider those canon, especially Jenica. Jenica is just a poorly written self-insert character. I feel like she completely ruined the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles IDW universe. Um, I think before she was brought in and became a turtle, the series was a lot better. And then once she came in, it just kind of became her. Like, it's no longer the Ninja Turtles. It's basically the Jenica show featuring the Ninja Turtles. So, yeah, in my opinion, this is just my opinion. But in my opinion, this is the first time we're getting uh, female turtles. And we get two of them. And um, they're bickering. They're bantering. They're, they're babies, basically. So uh, none of them are really taking their training seriously except for uno uno is the only one that's like she's basically the michael uh not the michael she's basically the leonardo of the group in a sense like she's like the teacher's pet constantly kissing ass always wanting to do all the training and stuff odin is always just thinking about his stomach and trying to eat and he is kind of like the um the older sister of odin in a sense like she's the one that kind of like tries to protect him and 
you know, baby him and stuff. But eventually, Casey starts getting just pissed off. She gets annoyed, like, I'm trying to teach these babies, and they're just not listening to me. And that's when April comes in, and she's like, all right, let's just take a time out. Um, let's just take a short break. And she decides to talk to Casey. And basically says, like, I know what you're trying to do. I know you want to create the next generation of Ninja Turtles. And we especially need something like that now because with Oroku dead, there's a huge power vacuum. Like, just because he was killed, that doesn't mean that there's going to be peace now. Now someone's got to fill in that place. And so now there's a bunch of people gunning for becoming, uh, you know, for that power that he left behind. And um, there's a lot of infighting. So we do need the next generation of Ninja Turtles. But the thing you got to realize is that Michelangelo's dying wish wasn't about fighting. It was about knowing peace. And also, these are babies. So you can't... You got to take baby steps, especially with babies. Like you can't just expect them to be gun ho right from the get go. And um, we kind of end that little story. And then we cut to a flashback of Michelangelo and uh, we get like the rest of the issue is just him in the past and his journey. And basically after his uh, family was killed and we, we get to see a brief little recap of all of his family, how they died. Like I said, you can get more uh, detailed information by watching my video, which uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be on, in the playlist at the end. I, I want to point one thing out because I've had so many people like bring this up to me in my video that Raphael's weapon is not a kunai, it's a sai. And yes, I know that. You don't have to keep telling me. I know that it's a sai. If you watch the video and actually listen to it and watch the panel that I'm showing, you'll see that Raphael did not get killed by his Sai. He got killed by a weapon he had strapped to his thigh that Karai steals and jabs it in his throat. I was mistaken though. I did refer to it as a kunai. It's actually not a kunai. It was actually a, a guitar. So yeah, I, I, I know I'm just kind of bringing that up here, but it's just, I've had so many people tell me, it's a Sai, you retard. Are you stupid? Raphael's weapon is a Sai. I know Raphael's weapon is a Sai. He wasn't killed by his Sai. He was killed by another weapon that he was also carrying. I mistakenly said it was a kunai. It's actually a guitar. But yeah, all of his friends are dead. And at this point in time, he is still under the impression that April is dead. He believes April's dead. Uh, he believes the Fujitoid is dead. Fujitoid's actually not dead. Fujitoid's still... Well, Fujitoid was still alive at this point in time. Fujitoid does die uh, later on during the last Ronin. Fujitoid ends up sacrificing it itself to kill Baxter. Michael at this point in time believes he's he's alone. And so he's basically trying to kill himself without straight up killing himself. He decides to walk up this cold, unforgiving mountain without any food or water. But even then, he's still able to survive. He uh, finds this shack and he just kind of throws himself down. He's waiting for death, but it never comes. Eventually, he steps out. It's spring and um, he starts meditating. He starts fishing. He starts gardening and he starts realizing that, you know what? Maybe this is what I've been trying to achieve, final peace. And that's when he gets attacked by these hoodlums who start beating the crap out of him. And at first, he doesn't do anything about it. And that's why I was kind of confused because in the very first panel, the very first page of this issue, we see him getting beaten up by these people. And I'm like, dude, you're a ninja turtle. You should be able to easily beat them. Why aren't you fighting back? And then it's like, okay, now I know why. It's because he's, a he's actually, he wants the, the death to come. He's uh, embracing the pain. He has survivor's guilt, big time. And he's waiting for death to come. And as they're beating him up, he sees a book that his sensei wrote, that uh, his father wrote, Splinter. And he's wondering, like, what would my father say? And then we get what his father will say. Get up, foolish child. And we get a flashback within that flashback. Basically, we see Michelangelo. He's just killed a bunch of uh, Foot Clan. And um, him, the rest of his brothers, and his father, Splinter, are fighting the Foot Clan, and they're like, this is it. Like, we've nearly broken through the last of uh, last line of Foot Clan defenders. We, uh, this is what we've been fighting for. Oroku Saiki's head and vengeance will soon belong to the Hamato Clan. You've trained all your life for this. This is your moment. Get up and rejoin the fight. And Michelangelo is like, I can't. And Splinter basically says, this is not your destiny. I will not leave you here to meet a coward's end. And then that's when it clicks into Michelangelo's head. He's like, coward, I am no coward. This is not my destiny. 
and he fights back and he kills <laughs> he uh one guy's about to kill him with um what kind of looks like a modified pickaxe in the sense it's almost like half pickaxe half regular axe it's like a mix between the two it's an axe but it's like a really weird designed axe anyways he's about to kill michelangelo and michelangelo grabs it and just basically disembowels him like just slices his belly open and then he starts beating the crap of everyone else and killing everyone else except for one he leaves one alive who like runs away and that's when michelangelo realizes like my life was set for me from birth respect honor redemption family i can't stay here and just live the rest of my life this way like i have to get redemption for my family that is my destiny and that redemption is on the battlefield so he decides to set out and he's going to go back and kill heroku but before then he comes across this village that's being attacked um, everyone's dead he even sees like this little girl who's just like burning to death and it's uh, a group and um one of the it's, it's the ruffians that he was attacked before one of them escaped and there's like even more of them and he slaughters all of them he just starts cutting the crap out of all of them he murders everybody and i'm like yes this is the ninja turtles like after reading the mirage run i i want more of these turtles more of the turtles that are like they're ninjas they're they're going to kill their opponents they're not just going to knock them out and then just leave them to commit more crimes they're like nah i'm a ninja my whole thing is to kill i'm going to kill you so that's what michelangelo does he just goes and he starts slaughtering all these people and then uh he realizes that they're being led by this guy named uh nicknamed the death worm so i'm assuming that's going to be the setup for uh the big baddie for this arc or this mini series is it a mini series i'm assuming it's a mini series so i'm assuming the big baddie for this mini series is going to be the death worm but yeah basically teenage mutant ninja turtles the last run in the lost years is two separate timelines we have the past which is michelangelo after losing all his family and how he decides to go from wanting to die to deciding to get revenge and coming back to manhattan and just the travels and stuff that he went on um, before he uh, he got back to the city and then we got the present which would be our future but it's basically uh what happened after the last ronin so this series is both a prequel and a sequel we get to see what happened before the last ronin and we get to see the fallout from the last ronin which i think is pretty interesting but yeah i really enjoy this the artwork is fantastic i believe it's the same artist as the last ronin which i freaking loved the writing is great i love the characterization this was great i loved it i'm so glad to see uh to see a return to the ronin verse i'm so glad to see more i don't know what to make of the new batch of ninja turtles of um odin uno moha and yi we've seen very little of them and what little we've seen i mean they're basically babies at this point in time so we can see a little bit of what their personality is like but not too much so i don't know i mean obviously i'm going to love the og versions more because i mean when it comes to ninja turtles there is only one ninja turtles group and that's Raphael, leonardo donatello and michelangelo so um We'll see. We'll, we'll see if Kevin Eastman and Tom Waltz are able to make me fall in love with this new generation of Ninja Turtles. We'll find out. Um, at this point in time, I don't, I don't hate them. I don't like them. They're just, they're okay. I guess we'll see what happens with them. But uh, regardless of that, great issue. I loved it. Huge recommendation. There you go. Go check it out. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin, Lost Years, issue number one from idw it was fantastic anyways i hope you enjoyed the video hope to see you next time take care later so what'd you guys think of that video i hope you guys enjoyed if you guys haven't already please subscribe hit that bell for a notification leave a like if you enjoyed the video and if you didn't enjoy the video thank you for watching it this far and i hope the next video is more to your liking feel free to check out the playlist that you guys see and i hope to see you guys next time later